Hi everyone, it's Meher from Vancouver, BC, and welcome to my YouTube channel. The purpose of my videos is to introduce you to tips that will help you elevate your job search by interviewing the experts. If you are a first time watcher, please subscribe to the channel so that you get the notification every day I post the videos. So let's start with today's interview. Hi everyone, welcome back to another great interview series with me. Today I have the privilege to interview Rich Cardovna. Hi Rich, how are you doing? Hi, uh, how are you Meher? I'm doing great, thank you for being here. So Rich, you're an executive storyteller and your purpose is to maximize the visibility of the person by creating, repairing and amplifying their personal brand or the company's brand by first class video, strategy, content and distribution. So can you tell us more about yourself and your entrepreneurial career, what obstacles yes. you had and how you overcome them? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, my first obstacle was deciding to leave the traditional workforce, <laughs> and, and that's uh, very challenging in itself. Um, entrepreneurship for me and, and, and what you described, what I do, uh, it happened because of one of your recent guests, who's a friend of mine, Claude Silver. Um, when I left my corporate job because I was unhappy, I, I, I really had to just kind of think it out and what I wanted to do. I, I would never advise anyone to quit a job without a plan, but I, I had to leave. And I, I, I'm not saying, you know, we all haven't been there, but I had to leave. I felt like I had to make a sharp turn in my life. Um, my wife supported me in my decision. She had faith in me. She trusted me. So uh, I decided to become an entrepreneur. But what was I going to do uh, is, is I, I wasn't sure. So I decided to pursue my curiosities. I looked into photography, then videography, and then I realized, you know, both of those are okay, but what I actually like is what we're doing right now, just interacting with people, learning about people, helping people, providing value, getting value, and Claude was my first client, and Claude, um, uh, for those of you who don't know her, uh, she's obviously been on the show before, but she's the chief heart officer at VaynerMedia. We had a, a little bit of a friendship going on for a couple years while I was at my corporate job, and... I just, after I quit, I, I, I was excited to tell her and, and I decided I, how could I repay her? And I asked her if I could document her, film her. Uh, why? Because I thought she needed more visibility. I thought she was a pure voice, a great voice that more people needed to see. So I wanted to amplify her brand. Uh, in doing so, I went, I asked her, she said yes. And then, and then that's how it kind of happened. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you know, you asked about some of the obstacles. Um, the biggest obstacle, in my opinion, when it comes to entrepreneurship is trying to just have so many different things figured out. Uh, I mean, and I could, we could be technical. It could be accounting. It could be forming your LLC. Um, it could be your brand. It could be, do I have a marketing budget? It could be, how much am I doing all by myself? Now, there's so many different pockets to it. And what when you work in a traditional workforce, I mean, all these things are kind of outlined for you and you are more of an executor. Uh, it doesn't mean you don't think outside the box and contribute and have vision, but if you are an executor, um, at least you kind of have something you're supposed to follow and you know the lane you're supposed to be in. When it's your idea, you are the one who forms that mission and that changes the trajectory of everything. And uh, while it is an obstacle, it's also a blessing as well because I've probably experienced more personal and professional growth in the last 12 months um, than I have in the last four years. Uh, so, so I would say trying to determine, you know, what's a priority and what's not. You, learning what not to focus on mm -hmm. is actually more important than learning to what to focus on. And how you stay motivated? I know that a lot of things happening, a lot of priorities, financial pressure or other. How you keep yourself motivated? It's so easy to stay motivated, in my opinion. Uh, my wife's actually sitting right here. I mean, she sees me nonstop. And the reason is I'm trying to do something special. Period. Like, that's it. So I wake up and I'm excited to work. I go to bed and I'm still doing work and I need to get better about that. But when you're doing what you want, and you feel that there's a little bit of traction, I mean, the motivation just increases. And, you know, it's, it's not really willpower anymore. You know, uh, like, 
I always love fitness analogies, but if I have 20 pounds to lose, you know, that motivation is, is kind of difficult to get up day after day, but it's not just that. You have to eat right too, and you might have to count calories and all these other things. Yeah. If you are not going to enjoy that process, then you're destined to fail. You're destined to fail, like period. That's just the way it is. So if you love what you're doing, you start to get traction and you try and get 1% better every day or every week, whatever it may be, then it's, it's, it's not hard to stay motivated. Um, the thing, the motivation stays, the mental, I don't want to say anguish, uh, the, the drawbacks mm -hmm. are simply the trial and error, you know, the feedback that you're going to get from people, the people who say no, or the people that don't want to pay you full price or whatever it may be, you know, those are all uh, things that you have to deal with. But I would never say that that, you know, inhibits my motivation in any way, shape or form. Yeah. I totally agree with you. In my uh, interviewing, when I see someone posting or saying that I really like what you're doing or your tip helped me find a job, that motivates me to continue doing because there are days that comes to me like, why, why am I doing this? You know, all this effort and putting everything out so that I help people. When I get those tips or when people DM me saying that it really helped, it keeps me motivated to go on and do what I'm doing. You're doing, you're, and, and, and that's the thing. Like, I could tell this is, this is fun for you. And yes. if it's fun, then like, that's half of it, right? Yes. I, I mean, like, you can't make money off fun, you know, just, just fun alone. But if it, I could just tell, and especially through all our interactions, like how much this means to you. And that's all you really need. Yeah. If, if, if you don't really feel it, if you don't really feel it inside, then, uh, you know, you are going to find that having to draw upon motivation is going to become increasingly difficult and, and almost to the point where you lose your vision. Mm -hmm. And the more you lose your vision, the more you compare yourself to others, the more apt you are to quit. And, and, and you can't. You can't. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Rich. And thank you for those tips. And for the audience watching or listening, if you have any other tips in terms of entrepreneurship, how to stay motivated, how to overcome obstacles, please leave it in the comment section. Like and share the video, subscribe to the channel, and tune in tomorrow for another question with Rich.